afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to our own little program that we call Matinee with Bob and Ray. It's a real pleasure to be broadcasting again from our summer home here in Friendly Valley. Uh, I'm very pleased to be back with you all in real life today. That's so? Yesterday, I, uh, I greeted you, of course, from a disc. And I certainly miss chatting. Did you listen to the program yesterday? Oh. sounded vaguely familiar to me. It sounded just like you two fellows were talking the same thing what you did Saturday. Probably was. Several people have called me to ask if that was true. I believe it was Steve O'Neill after yesterday's game who summed it all up nicely when he said... <laughs> well, we got next year to think about, you know. No, yeah, it's okay. Well, that's one game. Okay, we come all the way down to New York and you beat us. That's a nice one. One game is in the whole season. We've got a long time to go. Yeah, your father's must be. But here to tell us more about the baseball picture by special telephonic communication <laughs> is Steve O'Neill, is uh, Steve Bosco, who uh, is the man that we sent us out. You may remember. So, hello, Steve. It's Steve Bosco reporting. Uh, you uh, called us this morning and had rather a uh, an unusual conversation. You said something about returning here to Boston. Oh, well, it, it's my plan now, uh, Bob and Ray, to... Uh, well, you speak a little bit clearer. I can't hear any part of what you're saying. It's my plan now, Bob and Ray. That's too clear. To uh, broadcast the marathon for you tomorrow. You're coming up here. You're going to forget baseball tomorrow only, is that it? All I'm going to get on my sneakers and get out there and pound the pavements again. Going to run right along with them, are you? Well, I used to run along, but the doctor told me not to. I used to pound my feet so hard that I turned my brain into jelly there uh-huh. one year. And well, I'm uh, giving up marathoning. I see, but you will be equipped to take care of the entire race from start to finish. Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, what time uh, will you be airing this graphic description? Well, probably so we can by miss the it. time you uh, hit the airwaves with your splendid program. I've Thank heard you. so many nice comments about you it. I've never what? heard the thing. Yeah. But uh, the talk about it is wonderful. Well, you're, of course, an integral part of the thing. What? Yes. <laughs> I say you're an integral part of it. And uh, I suppose a lot of the people down in Washington are talking about it, too, aren't they? What? I say a lot of people in Washington must be talking about the program. I haven't been in what Washington. What station carries us down there? WFMF and WFMF-FM. Oh, yeah. And on TV, they have a station yes, there? Yes, WTV-TV. Uh-huh. Well, uh, we'll look for you tomorrow, then. Are you going to stop in at the station before you go out to Hopkinton? Uh, what's that again? Are you going to stop in at the station before you go out to Hopkinton? Uh, That's what's where the... they start racing, isn't it? Oh, is that so? Sure. Uh, have you looked into this complete picture? No, you, I haven't. You know what's ahead of you, don't you? You've got to run 26 miles. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, Did you hear me? I thought uh, we were cut off there for a minute. Oh, I said you've got to run 26 miles. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, I don't believe it'll be uh, up to me to run. I'll follow along with the race. Maybe I can and borrow... adequately just what transpired. Maybe I can borrow Fred Cole's motor scooter. I want to get right out there now and cover the Red Sox-Yankees game right out here in good old Columbus. And huh? Hello? Hello? Yes. What'd you say? I said I want to hurry out now and catch the Red Sox-Yankees game held here in Columbus. All right. Have a report on that tomorrow. It's Steve Bosco rounding first, being thrown out at second. Well, we have something to look forward to tomorrow, then, with a description of that race. Remember, four years ago, we had a, a, a memorable broadcast that... A near-historic event, Bob. When That's we... right. And we're all looking forward to tomorrow with great expectations. <clears throat> but now, I think we should turn to Ken and Bill, don't you? Or, as they're better known, Arturo Toscanini and his group. And they are going to play one of the songs most requested. Oh, how can I say that? No, really, it is. It's This is a, one Mary of the things from Pagan Love Song, isn't it? Oh, uh, The House of Singing Bamboo. <laughs>
Uh, what in the world are you counting, Joan? <laughs> I'm counting the handkerchiefs we've received with Kirkman granulated soap. I'm so glad you started using Kirkman granulated. Believe me, so am I. It's the grandest soap I've ever used. Yes, and every time you buy a box, I get the hanky that comes inside. Just a minute, young lady. We'll share those hankies. There'll be enough for both of us. I like Kirkman granulated so well, I use it for everything from the family wash to a sink full of dishes. Yes, Joan's mother sure is smart, for modern Kirkman granulated is made to do all your soap and water jobs. Kirkman granulated suds booster action lifts out every trace of dirt and grime, makes washing easier. Kirkman granulated leaves wash dazzling white, colors bright. Kirkman granulated makes dishes sparkle, glassware gleam. Get Kirkman granulated at your grocer's today and you'll receive a pretty hanky right inside the box. You can't buy a better soap. You can't find a bigger bargain. Larry, what's that I, I heard somewhere about you going to run in this race tomorrow? Oh, no. A marathon? Oh, heavens to Betsy, no. You never you never have, have you? Uh, well, once I thought of doing it, but when I realized it was so far, I just gave up. You'll stick to the water, huh? That's right. Stick to that swim out to Boston Light. It won't be long now before you'll be getting into training for this summer's Well, no, of course, I'm in training all year round, Bob. I know you're right that you're fighting weight now. I always try to keep myself physically fit. And uh, can we look for anything unusual in this year's swim out there? What? Can we look for anything unusual in the I swim? suppose. Last year I came across some unusual things floating there as I yeah. went along. Those grape, <laughs> grapefruit halves it's and money things just, like that. It's huh? a bad moral factor, swimming uh, through halves of grapefruit I know and it. wax paper with jelly on it. I know it. And it must slow you down a little bit, It does. Bit it's a metal hazard. But this year we certainly hope that you won't tie her halfway You're out. You're afraid to breathe to in back. too deeply. <laughs> No, Never you know can't what you're going to catch. That's right. Minnows or something. Well, we have made elaborate preparations for this year's uh, coverage of, the, of that event, too. Oh, I see, yes. We're having complete sports coverage this year. The well, that's fine, tomorrow. yes, of course. That. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you'll let us yeah. know the minute you go into training, yes. will you? Yes, well, I am in training now. Well, what are you doing about it? Lifting barbells. <laughs> Lifting barbells, huh? Mm-hmm. How, yes, how much and I'm swimming at the YW with weights on my feet. That must be rather difficult. Well, it, I'm just trying to make it hard for myself. Uh-huh. And if I can swim with weights on my feet, I don't see why I couldn't swim out to Boston Light and back well, in jig time. No, I don't see why you can. Well, yes, you don't do that too often. You're growing gills. <laughs> yes. But, uh, funny, to, funny boy. To get on to uh, Screaming more serious funny, things honestly, here. Very funny, honestly. We have our problem expert ready with uh, yes. today's case. So, Ray, if you will... Uh, oh, yes. Will you, Mary, you sit down. Uh, yes. Uh, will you play our problem music, please? That is a problem in itself, that theme. Yes, it's time once again for U.S. Steel, makers of iron tablets, to present Mr. Agony and his unoriginal Bad Willow. Just a minute, Ken. Uh, look, I don't think Guy would be very happy to hear you doing that. It's beautiful. I plucked a rose from my garden. But now here is Mr. Agony. That's much better. Oh, Penny Goodman. All right, Mr. Sterling, our first problem. And let's try to be serious today, shall we? Problem I'm of Mr. In no mode for joviality. Problem of Mr. Artosco Turanini. Don't mention any proper names. I believe you made a mistake. It's Mr. Artino Toscaturo. No, it's Mr. Artino Toscatuni. You're, you're wrong there. It's Mr. Artrosky Tornatiro. <laughs> but anyway, sir, you are probably pleased. Uh, you, you, as I understand it, you have a lunch wagon, is that right? Yeah, that's right. And you have come to me with some problem involving the lunch wagon. That's right, I have. Go on with your story, please. Well, the first problem which I overcame was that uh, the thing was delivered to me with square wheels. Oh, I see. And I did not... You had ordered this, uh, this lunch wagon... That's right. And it came bouncing up to your door, so to speak, not with square bouncing, wheels. Bouncing, exactly. Uh, lumping up, kind of. I see. Uh, and I didn't notice until I had a, a cake in the oven, and boom. And uh, then you did notice that there were square wheels on this lunch I wagon. I piled down the edges. Is that the problem? You, or you did pile down the edges? They're perfectly round now, just, well, like my head, so to speak. All right, then what seems to be your problem? Oh, You've got to hurry it's along them dishes, here. It's them dishes which is gathering up out there. I hate to do dishes, and business has been rapid fire. Your business has been good. That's right. You uh-huh. have uh, uh, made more customers, new friends, yes. regular patronage. Yes, very definitely. So to speak. But uh, I'm down to now about two clean plates 
Uh, well, how has this come about? You, you, you say you've been in business for how many weeks now, sir? Uh, four weeks. And how many dishes did you have to begin with? Oh, a whole slew of them. Uh, uh, Would you say possibly you had two or three hundred dishes? Easily, yes. And come all the time that you have been open. Yes. You haven't been doing any dishes, is that right? That's right. I hate to put my hand in that water, you know. Well, it's, it's greasy and so forth. That's right. It's squeamish. And, and uh, so you have let these dishes pile up. Pile up there and just keep using the new ones. And, and now you're down to only a bare minimum. <laughs> That's right. And you have come to me to find out... Uh, uh, what should I do, Sir? Well, I can offer you two solutions. One, be that you hire someone to wash the dishes for you. Well, I'm not, no, no, I'm not doing that much business to wash. You well, can't afford to have a dishwasher? In. No. It's a case of my having to do it myself to get out of the business, and uh, that's what I'm here. What, what should I do? Well, I would advise you, sir, if this be the case... Get out of the business? That you yeah. do get out of the business, because obviously you're not fit. Uh, I'm not fit, or, really. Or very well equipped. I'm not equipped so, mentally for the job either. No, I think you're mentally a little bit backward. Slow. They turned me uh, cool. Your, your personality was... doesn't uh, seep through. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's twin personality. In other words, you're a jerk. To sum up, that's nice. To sum it up. Well, I would suggest that you try to find some other some other line of endeavor, possibly a Chinese hand laundry. Do you like to do laundry? Well, I like to wash hands, yeah. Well, then I would suggest you go into that business. And uh, trying to build out of the lumber of your life a temple and not a tavern. Uh, obviously, uh, this I mean, restaurant. I go into a, into a, I let me finish, please, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Obviously, this restaurant business is not for you. No, no. So uh, I would suggest you take my advice and start all over again. Well, I'd go into that hand laundry business, but there aren't many hands that people send around to be laundry. Well, if you'll see me after the program in my hand laundry. I'll try and help you out a little bit further. You've been very kind to me, Hum. <laughs> All right, Snook. <laughs> and we have a word from Raymond's here, do we? You ready, boys? Store your first for one percent. What percent? One percent? Store your first for one percent, my fair lady. Where? Raymond's. Raymond's, nationally famous home of bargains, offers you New England's biggest fur storage value. At Raymond's, your furs are stored in exactly the same vaults used by other fine furriers, charging two and three percent. Yet Raymond's fur storage in the same vaults, the newest and most modern in Boston, costs just one percent. You can store your fur coat for as little as two dollars, safe from moths, fire, theft, and summer heat. From start to finish, only fur experts handle your coat, and full insurance protects it at all times. However, space is limited, so call Raymond's today. But I want to wear my fur coat a few more weeks. You can. Simply reserve the space now. Store whenever you wish. Just phone Hubbard 2 800 today. Store your first for one percent, my fair lady. Phone Raymond's Hubbard 2 800. I would just like to say that one of our many radio family members has just called and very warm-heartedly said that they would take the dirty dishes that have piled up on oh, this restaurant owner. Boy. They will put you back in business again, sir. You are, st you are started on the way to success once more. I know you won't make the same mistakes again. Thanks again, everybody along Radio Lane. And our thanks, of course, to that wonderful member of our big radio family. It does our heart run nuts. <laughs> Now, The Life and Loves of Linda Lovely, written for radio by A. Carrington Love, starring Marcia Van Allshot as Linda, Sherman L. Sturdley as David, Uncle Eugene is portrayed by Horace K. Winterhoff. The day after the startling discovery that nothing was growing on the lampshade, Linda and David settled down to a cozy winter in Riversmouth. Oh, just a moment. Wait a minute, I have last fall script yeah, the script has changed spring. twice a year, and I have to get the wrong one. It's Cozy Spring. As they settle down to a cozy spring in River's Mouth, we hear the babbling of the brook. And we hear Linda say, Where was that brook would stop its silly babbling? I have the campfire going, my dear. Wonderful. Have you got the marshmallows to toast? Mm -hmm. I love the smell of bacon out here in the forest. It's wonderful to get away from Uncle Eugene for a while. Listen to that beautiful bird. Over there by the three trees. There. And one there. And one there. But now I see a hunter approaching. One there. 
And another hunter? That's actually me. I'm playing a balloon. And who's that over there? Why, it's Uncle Eugene. Hello, folks. I'm not playing anything. Goodbye. Huh? Come over here, Uncle Eugene, and get close to the fire. What you having, a picnic? Yes. Where's the music coming from? The birds are making all the The birds in the trees, Uncle Eugene. It's a regular symphony. It is. I'll have to tell Margaret Kurtz about this. Oh, I think it's beautiful out here. We were commuting with nature, Uncle Eugene. No, it's it's communing, day. Oh, yes, I see that now. I didn't bring my spectacles today. Yes. Oh, it's wonderful out here in, yes. in nature and everything. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's a very attractive sunsuit you're wearing, too. It's caught at the neck with a Tootsie Roll. It's the latest thing, Uncle Eugene. Yes. Do you like it? I think it's fine. It's made out of sailcloth. Do you mind if I partook of some of your sandwiches? Hands off. I haven't off. had any lunches yet. Hands off. Oh, now, Linda, we, we can't be so cruel as to deny Uncle Eugene a sandwich after But he all. has a whole cellar full of peanut butter sandwiches at home. He never brings any of his own. Well, I'll bring some of mine next time. Well, all right. Help yourself. I want to be thoroughly aged. They will be, Uncle Eugene. You've had them for several months now. Go ahead. Help yourself. Thanks. I think I'll just reach it. Ooh. Oh, that's the that's the bag with the oysters in it. Yeah, I don't want it to go. <laughs> I have a sandwich now, and it's my favorite flavor, peanut butter. I don't remember packing any peanut butter sandwiches. Did you, David? No, that's the odd part of it. We didn't. It must have been one of the birds. <laughs> it's delicious, though. <laughs> really wonderful. Oh, I can't David. thank you enough for this invitation you have given me to join your picnic. Oh, I feel so gay. But we'd better be off because a thunder shower may come up at any moment. Oh, yes, it's clambering up for a nor'easter now. Let's hurry back to the house where it'll be warm and cozy by the fireside. Let's run. And as we do... Well, we don't have a radio Come, let's one. run. We're all through with it. Oh. Oh, uh, I, I meant to tell you, but... I wish you'd tell me when we come to the end of that, because it's pretty embarrassing for me to... I know to go on there. Say, go on into a commercial as yeah. Miss Linda Lovely. Well, I was trying to think of a neat tie-in for Only the Valiant. Oh, another movie is in town? Maybe I could help out somewhat on this thing. I don't know whether I could or not. Well, I tell you what, why don't we listen to the uh, first part of it, and then you can add any comments that you might think necessary. I can do maybe what we call in radio the live tag. <laughs> All right. Warner Brothers present Gregory Peck in Only the Valiant. Gregory Peck as Captain Lance, who gave Fort Invincible its name. Gregory Peck leading a handful of desert derelicts. A coward, a drunkard, a deserter, a madman, and a fool. And he made heroes of them all. It's one of the most stirring chapters in the annals of American adventure. They were six. And they fought like 600. Only the Valiant, starring Gregory Peck. Also starring Barbara Payton and Ward Bond with Gig Young and Lon Chaney. A William Cagney production from Warner Brothers. Say, want to really relax? Want to really get away from it all? Then see a picture like Only the Valiant. Say Gregory Peck. No, on <laughs> Just a moment, Tex. If you want to read the light, read this on the microphone. On mic, please. Oh, I was over here in the yeah. corner. I thought they had the boom mic over there. <laughs> say Gregory Peck. Say Gregory Peck, starring in Warner Brothers, Only the Valiant, opening tomorrow at the Met Metro Metropolitan. I can't pronounce. Just say something. Metropolitan theater. at some theater in Boston. That's well, that isn't very. They're not going to be too happy about that. That sounds like an exciting thing from start to finish. What do you say there was? Only six there, and they they looked like six hundred. That's right. There's only six, and Gregory Peck, of course, is more valiant than the others. And it's a movie that you want to... be. Uh, he's getting more pay for this picture, too. So go on down and enjoy yourself if you really want to get away from it all. That uh, opens tomorrow at the Metropolitan Theater. That's Patriot's Day. And that reminds me that, of course, Bob and I will be on the air with our Patriot's Day pageant program in full costume for Color Radio. <laughs> Same thing we've been doing for 43 years in all mediums of show business. Sideshows, <laughs> everywhere else. And, the, uh... uh this particular show, both Bob and I will do the program on horseback, dressed as William Dawes 
and Paul Revere tomorrow. And it will be an exciting broadcast from start to finish. Believe so you look wait. for us riding that historic route. We expect to be in Brockton by about uh, 325. And then uh, following the original course set by Paul Revere, we'll hit Taunton about 4 o'clock. And we'll be down there to see all you minute folks in Taunton. We, we may not have our facts right, but we'll uh, check on them. By airtime tomorrow, we certainly should have everything straightened out in our mind. <laughs> this thing will be real neat by that time, so you don't want to miss it. We're looking forward to it. We still have a few of those smoked glasses for looking at eclipses, so if you'd like a smoked glass to look at an eclipse with, just send your request to Smoke Glass for Looking at Eclipses, care of this station, and we'll get them on out to your post pay. It will come marked in the plain wrapper, simply stating, Smoke Glasses for Looking at Eclipses with... Ken and Bill again furnished the marvelous musical background for the production. The uh, costumes were by Double Wear. Sneakers by Sturdley Brothers. Nice work, boy. So we'll see you all again tomorrow tomorrow morning from 6.35 to 9. Right if you get work. And hang by your thumbs, everyone. I'm sure you'll agree that it's milder, much milder. <laughs>